He's the way, the truth, yeah. and the life. Come on. To know that besides Him there is no, no other. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. My, my, my. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I told you last week that there are many ways that the Lord gives a minister His sermons. Right. Sometimes it's a song that you hear, and sometimes it's something that one of your congregation says in passing. Sometimes it's a sign that you see. A lot of different things. The Lord will plant a seed in your heart and Come continue on. to stir, and the more He stirs it, the bigger it gets. Yeah. Amen. Sort of like egg whites, you know. Yes, sir. The more you beat them, fluffier and bigger it gets. Amen. <laughs> so that's the way it is with uh, the seed that He plants there. And... Uh, that's where this morning's sermon comes from. Of course, it's been in the Word of God forever, but right. it jumped off the pages at me this week because of something that I saw at Walmart. And uh, if God is anything, He's fair and balanced. Amen? Yes. I got to thinking about Fox News, you know, how they have their slogan, fair and balanced. Yeah. Well, God is too. He's fair and He's balanced. Yes, Amen? Sir. Last Sunday morning we preached about restoration. Tuesday night, Brother Mike preached about joy. And this morning we're going to preach about judgment. Praise Amen. God. Hallelujah. So that's fair and balanced. That's Amen. hitting both sides of the scales. Amen. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. But this past uh, week, Thursday I think it was, while in Walmart, <coughs> and I had Hannah and Isaac with me, and uh, we had one of those buggies, you know, where they have the seats there where the kids can sit, and you push it, and it's about from here. It's too, it's too long, really, to, to be called a normal buggy. But anyway, <clears throat> hard to guide. Amen. But uh, they were sitting there, and I glanced up. And they were just they were getting loaded into the buggy, and I glanced up. And coming down the, the uh, middle of one of the aisles there across the front of the store, <clears throat> there was a young man that had on a white T-shirt. And uh, it had in big black letters on the front of it, it had a statement. <clears throat> But what caught my eye and what caused me to grab the buggy and turn it real fast and mm -hmm. take a quick detour so that the kids didn't see it yeah. was in the middle of his chest, in the middle of the statement, in big black bold letters, was the F word. Oh. Mm. So I grabbed the cart and I shoved it down one of the aisles to keep the kids from seeing it and I thought, my God, yeah. how, low, how far have we fallen? Yes. Amen. Amen. Words that were once spoken silence or spoken under someone's breath or yeah. for sure not in public are now plastered on the front of t-shirts and walked oh. around in stores with it on oh. there. I don't blame the young man. More than likely if you traced his roots back, he don't have a mom and daddy that gives a flip. Amen. Oh. He doesn't have a mom and daddy that cares much about his soul. Amen. I might be wrong about that, but more times than not, that's the way it is. Yeah. Mom and daddy's too busy, or maybe they don't believe in this Jesus thing that they've never tried. Right. Like Brother Sleece was talking about this morning. Amen. Mm -hmm. Maybe they don't believe in old-fashioned things, but my, my, my. That grieved my heart and grieved my spirit whenever I saw that. I thought it's bad enough that sometimes I've almost had to take my hands and cover their ears because of... Somebody would be walking through the store in an argument or a, or, a, or, or a fight even. Sometimes you think they're going to hit each other. and They're, they're calling each other everything in the book. And Amen. you do your best to try and get your kids away from that. Or, or maybe there have been times that we've stood outside waiting for a car to pass. And, yeah. and you know, in one of the parking lots and some rap music would be coming out from the inside of the car pound and loud and every other word was a curse word or God's name in vain or the F word. Oh my! How far our intelligent nation has came. Amen? Yes. Whenever things that used to be a shame yes. and an abomination are now yeah. shouted from the rooftops right. because there is no shame, no remorse. And we're seeing it in this generation today. Yes, sir. Amen. I heard this week on the news about some, or maybe it was in a sermon I was listening to, about some children that, that uh, went out and, and killed another student, killed another child. And the next day they went to school like nothing had taken place at all. Yeah. We hear it. It's not a, it's not a, 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 a crazy thing or it's not an odd thing to hear about. A teenage girl going into the bathroom. This has happened more than once in my generation that I've heard about it. 
Going into the bathroom and delivering the baby and on the way out of the bathroom dropping the baby in the trash can on the way out. Amen? Come on. Those are the kind of things you get when you raise a generation without any godly foundation and without any morals. Amen. That's exactly what you get when you have mom and daddy. Instead of taking their children to church or line dancing on Saturday night and getting drunk with the rest of the neighbors. Amen? Amen. That's the kind of seed that you sow. That's the kind of reaping that you do yeah. from that which you've sowed. And I went to look in, in Ezra the ninth chapter because I remember the Scripture in the Word of God. It's in Ezra the ninth chapter. We're going to read some of this this morning. My, my, my. The nation that forgot how to blush. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. No longer is sin a shame in the United States. Come on, brother. No longer is it an abomination for man to lie with men. I'm talking about in yeah. the sight of man. It's still an abomination right. in the sight of God. I'm talking yeah. about the way it is perceived by our nation today. Amen? Wrong. No longer is it wrong to kill unborn babies. Amen? Yeah. No longer is it wrong to declare that you're a homosexual. As a matter of fact, if people treat you bad, you can sue them for discrimination. Amen? Right. You can sue them for hate. Slander. Slander. Because they don't like your chosen lifestyle. Amen? Harassment. Harassment. And what used to be done in secret yes. is now done openly. Right. Amen. True. Is now done openly. I remember a time, it was in, it's in one of the books of the prophets, Isaiah and Jeremiah 1, mm. that the Lord was talking about their sin that they had committed fornication on the hillsides, on the hilltops. Right. They had flaunted their sin in the face of God. Now, if you don't think that's what America's doing today, then you've got another thing coming. Come on. No longer is she ashamed of sin. No longer does she hide that which is ungodly. Mm -hmm. Amen? Come on. You can catch senators or congressmen living ungodly lifestyles. Right. And they say, well, I didn't break the law. I'm not ashamed of this. Yeah. Amen? Amen? We can have the President of the United States Come on. having sex with an intern in the Oval Office. Right. Amen? Yeah. That's oh, but he's still held up as one of the best presidents we ever had. Yeah. From the yeah. liberal side, anyway. Uh, Amen? Come on. I'm talking about a nation that forgets how to blush. Right. A nation that forgets how to be ashamed of sin. Yeah. You know, mamas used to look at their kids and say, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Uh -huh. That's when we need some preachers that are standing in pulpits today and instead of pat you on the back while you're living in adultery and shacking up, yeah. we need some preachers like the prophet Nathan when he went before David and say, you should be ashamed of yourself. Yes, Amen? Sir. You should feel bad today if you're living a lifestyle of sin. I know all of us sin and we fall short of the glory of God. But if you're shacking up today, guess what? I don't want you to feel good whenever you hear me preach. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If you're a practicing homosexual today, I don't want you to feel goosebumps and feel good while I'm preaching. Amen. Wow. I don't want you to be able to sit in the congregation wow. of God's people and feel like you're one of the guys. Amen. Yeah. I want you to feel out of place. I want you to feel Holy Ghost conviction that will cause you to come down to an old-fashioned altar and experience change in your life. Come on. My job is not to make you feel comfortable. My job is to preach you the truth according to the book, the yes. Word of God. Amen. Come on, preach. Yes. Hey, Brother Billy, well, you're doing a pretty good job because I usually don't feel comfortable when you preach. Well, good. <laughs> good. Amen. Come on. It doesn't make people feel comfortable whenever you take a stand against Halloween. Right. Like Brother Sleeves and Brother David was talking about this morning. Amen. Come on. It doesn't make people feel good and whenever you go to talking about homosexuality being an abomination or abortion being murder or the fact that Christians by the thousands or not more yeah. will vote for someone who is the most radical abortions president we've ever had. Come on. Amen. Come on, tell no it. restrictions whatsoever. Right. As long as it's in the womb, you can kill it. Amen. I like something that I read and I probably can't get it right, but there was a woman that went to the doctor. She said, Doctor, I'm pregnant. I've, I've got to end this pregnancy. I've got to get rid of it. I, yeah. I, I don't need but one baby. And I've already, I've got, already got a baby. I've already got a child. Yeah. I think the child might have been about two years old. And, and she said, I, I need to get rid of this baby. I don't want this pregnancy. I need to get rid of it. Come on. And the doctor said, well, okay, let's look at your options here. Yeah. You don't want but one child. Mm -hmm. It would be far more safer for you 
Because abortions are not completely safe. That's a lot right. of complications can go on. Amen. You could die. Right. It's, it's plausible that you could die right. during an abortion. Amen. So it would be best if we just killed your two-year-old. Mm. And you carry this baby to term, and you'll still just have one child. Oh, no, doctor, no. That's my baby. He said, so is the one that you're carrying in your belly. Come on. Amen. Not look like that anymore. Look that, that way anymore. Right. Amen. Come on. No restrictions whatsoever. That's right. No shame. Come on. We find that condemnation in Ezra, the ninth chapter. Mm -hmm. Now, when these things were done, the princes came to me saying, the people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the people of the lands, doing according to their abominations, mm -hmm. even of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Jebusites and the Ammonites and the Moabites yeah. and the Egyptians and the Amorites, according to following them in or practicing, we can put that in there today, or practicing the same things, the same abominations that these nations, that these people were practicing. Amen? Come on. He said they have not separated themselves. You say, oh, Brother Billy, you're in the Old Testament. Yeah, well, I can give you New Testament Scripture for that if you want it. 2 Corinthians 6, we don't have to go there. Come but on. 2 Corinthians 6, 17 and 18, the Apostle Paul writes, Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith Come the on. Lord. Be ye separate, saith yeah. the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, yeah. and will be a father unto you. And ye shall be my sons and my daughters, and the Lord of the Lord God Almighty. Yeah. Amen? Come on. This is after the cross. For those of you who are out there, that's the only thing you want to hear about is after the cross. Mm -hmm. After the Old Testament. You don't want to hear about the Old Testament. You, you don't want to hear about the law. You don't want to hear about anything that has to do with living right. Amen? Mm -hmm. You just want to hear about grace. Well, this is after the cross and the, the way of salvation has been implemented. God still says, separate yourself right. from them. Don't follow after. Don't do those things. Amen? The abominations of the land. We need some separation brought back to the church. Yeah. My goodness. Mm -hmm. Some churches you go into, you can't tell if you're at the church or a lodge meeting. Amen? Yeah. Because there's no separation. You can't tell the difference. Right. Some churches, I go so far to this, some churches you walk into, you can't tell if you're at church or a rock concert. Come on, brother. Amen? Come on, brother. they got the strobe lights. Right. They've got the dry eyes. You know, they've got the smoke and the mirrors on stage. Right. They've got the song leader in the tight leather outfit prancing around singing yah, 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 yay, yay, yay. So you don't know if you're in church or if you happened in on a rock concert. Amen. We need some separation today. Yes, sir. Amen. And I realize that my convictions and your convictions, I've said this a thousand times, you've heard me say it, you can probably quote it as I say it, my convictions and your convictions are not the same, but you better have some convictions. If you don't, you're in trouble. Amen. Oh, if you can do well, I can do anything and everything. Well, you ain't saved. All right. Amen. You just explained to me you, you're not saved. If you can do anything and everything and feel no remorse whatsoever, Come on. then you probably ain't saved. Come on, breathe. These people, as we read down through here, had committed abominations. Mm -hmm. Verse 2 says, For they have taken their daughters for themselves and for their sons, yeah. so that the holy seed had been mingled themselves with the people of those lands. In other words, they had taken the clean and the unclean, and they had mingled it together. Well, that's what the church has done today. Amen. Amen. We have taken the clean. Oh, and they'll do that with Halloween. Mm -hmm. They'll dress it up, and they'll put a Christian mask on it. Right. People on Facebook posting their harvest festivals that they've been to already. Right. Christians, born-again people. Uh -huh. Little outfits that the children were wearing. Yeah. Amen. Come on. But we're not, we don't believe in Halloween. Mm -hmm. It's funny to me how you can talk to somebody and you can bring up Halloween. Oh, we don't celebrate Halloween. We don't celebrate it. And before you're through, they'll invite you to their harvest festival. Come on. And you say, what? Well, what's going to go on there? Well, we're going to carve some pumpkins. We're going to bob for some apples. Yeah. The kids are going to come dressed in some costumes. Yeah. We're going to give away candy. Right. You walk away thinking, well, sure I'm glad they don't celebrate Halloween. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> you can call it whatever you want to call it. I can bring a skunk in here this morning, <laughs> set it on the altar, yeah. and say, y'all come and pet this little dog. Y'all yeah. 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 come pet this little squirrel I got. Y'all yeah. oh. come up here and pet this cute little rabbit. Mm -hmm. A skunk is still a skunk, no matter what you call it. Amen? Right. You can call it a hallelujah party. You can call it a Halloween. You, you, some people call it a Halloween.
a Halloween fest. So you call it a, a, a harvest festival. Yeah. But you're still celebrating. That's it. The very thing that God condemns. Mm -hmm. I didn't make this up. Oh, did you hear Brother Billy's preaching some kind of strange stuff? Brother Billy's preaching the Word of God. Yeah. Hey, it's only strange to you because you haven't read it for yourself. Yeah. Say it again. It's in there, Brother Sleeves. Say it again. It causes you to scratch your head and wonder because you ain't opened up the book and seen what it has to say about it. Yeah. Scripture after Scripture condemning participation in it. Mm -hmm. Yet in the day that we live in, you become the odd man out when yeah. you begin talking about stuff like that. Well, you're crazy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I just don't understand. Well, no, you don't understand it. Mm. You had not read the book. Right. If you read the book, you'll understand it. Amen. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Amen. Right. Yeah. And he said, he would not that you fellowship with devils. Amen. Right. When you come into the land which God will give you, do not, do not uh, imitate the things of the people of that land. Do not go after paganism. Do not suffer a witch to live. And I ain't talking about killing them. I'm talking about participating in the things of witchcraft and the occult and demonic behavior. Yeah. God has never one time in His Word come said on. it's okay for you to fellowship with darkness. As a matter of fact, He says just the opposite. Amen. To shun the very appearance of evil. Come on. And as through, through, along through the years, whenever, you know, I would have to discuss with people, and I've done radio programs on this, and I've had different discussions with different ministers. Mm -hmm. One of the things that, came, that would come up at many times, they'd say, well, what do you think about giving out tracts to the kids that come to your Because they'll say, well, this is the only time of the year that people will come to your door, and it'll give you the opportunity mm -hmm. to share the gospel with them. Drop something, you know, drop a tract. Even they come up with some candy that has scriptures. It's wrapped in a paper that has scriptures on, on the, around the candy, you know, and you drop that in their bag. I like what Brother Rod Hendricks said this past week in a sermon that we're going to air on the radio station Wednesday. He said, well, you know what? If somebody drives by Brother Hendricks' house and I'm standing there and they see me dropping something in the bags of those that are trick-or-treating, they're going to think, huh, I didn't think Brother Rod celebrated Halloween. He's celebrating Halloween. They don't know what you're dropping in their bag. If the Bible says shun the very appearance of evil, then how, how am I doing that? If I'm standing there dropping things into the bags of the trick-or-treaters and nobody knows what that is. Mm. Nobody knows what it is. Oh, they may not come to your door, but once a year for you to share the gospel to them. Is that your way of getting out of Satan saying that you never go to their door to share the gospel with them? They may not come to your door but once a year, but what's stopping you from going to their door? The other 360 plus. Amen. Amen. Come on. What's stopping you? Like a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. That peddle their false doctrine. Right. When's the last time you ever <laughs> Hallelujah? When's the last time you ever somebody knocked and you peeked out and it was it looked like some church people, but the first thought that came to your mind was Pentecostal? Mm -mm. Baptist? Uh uh. It's Jehovah's Witness. Right. Amen. Why? Because they go from door to door right. sharing what they believe to be the truth. Amen. While you sit back in your recliner watching your TV waiting for them to come to you on Halloween so you can drop the truth in their bag. Get up off of your lazy duck. Go outside and share the light of God. Come on. Share the gospel of Jesus. Amen. I don't have to sit at the house and wait for them to come to me. Amen. Come on. Anybody that I deal with Anybody I deal with knows. Mm -hmm. I got preachers. I got people who live more that call, call me preacher, and I don't, I, could, I don't even know their name. Mm -hmm. I say, "Hello, preacher." I'm like, "Hey, how you doing?" I don't know who you are, but have a good day. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let your light so shine before men. Amen. Do the works of the Father before men, so that He'll be magnified, so they'll glorify your Father which is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Be ashamed of sin, mm -hmm. which is something that our nation apparently no longer holds to the majority Amen. of them anyway. That's right. Listen to this. For they have taken their daughters for themselves and their sons so that the holy seed have, they have mingled themselves with the people of those lands. Yea, the hand of the princes and the rulers yeah. hath been chief in this trespass. Come on. In other words, the rulers, the government has been part of this trespass as well. Oh, we see that, don't we? Amen. Amen. 
true. We got the government's got some people so disgusted they won't even go vote. They just think, well, it ain't going to get no better. Well, it might not, but you, that doesn't neglect your responsibility to go out and vote. Amen. Amen. One day you'll give an account for that. All right. Amen. When I heard this thing, let's see what Ezra's response was to this. I haven't even got to my scripture yet. Hmm. When I heard this thing, now, did he just brush it off as being something minor? Did he just wink at it and say, well, things ain't going to get no better anyway. Well, things will be all right in the long run. Well, ain't nothing I can do about it. That's what I hear a lot of people say. Amen? Mm -hmm. Did he compromise? Did it bother him any? Let's see what his reaction was. He said, I ripped my garment and my mantle, and I plucked off the hair of my head and my beard, and I sat down astonished. Now, that word astonished means I was numb. Yeah. I was devastated. I was stupefied. I think Brother Slees might have used that scripture this morning. I was speechless. Amen? He might have used that word, stupefied. I was speechless. Oh, that's not exactly how we see it today. Amen? Amen. Verse 4 says, Then were assembled unto me everyone that trembled at the words of God, of, Israel, of the God of Israel. Mm. We need some people like that today. Amen. That fear God. Yes. Amen. Because of the transgressions of those that had been carried away. Now listen, remember something. Ezra may very well have been guilty of some things. Yeah. We don't know exactly what he had done, what he hadn't done. But the Bible's not pointing this at him. Right. Yet he's ashamed and he is dumbfounded and he sits there shocked, rips his mantle, plucks out his beard yeah. because of the sins of the people. Come on. It grieved him so much to see the sins of the people. It would grieve you today, the state that this nation is in. Amen. It would grieve you today yeah. whenever you see a teenager walking around with a white shirt with <clears throat> filth written all over the front of it. Amen. Amen. It should grieve you today whenever you walk through one of the department stores and you see some of our young people dressed in black with black eyeliner and pitch black hair and yeah. into that gothic stuff. Amen? Oh. It should grieve your soul today to see our teenagers going to hell in a handbasket while mom and daddy don't care about it. It should grieve you today. Yes, sir. It grieved Ezra That's to see the condition good. of the nation of Israel. Black. It grieved him. Amen. Let's see what else he did. Verse 5 says, And at the evening sacrifice I rose up from my heaviness. See, he's burdened. Yeah. Oh, we could use a burden today. Amen. Oh, let's pray down a burden. My, my, my. Having rent my garment in my mouth, he said, I fell upon my knees. Mm. And I spread out my hands unto the Lord. My God. See, that's what we're going to be doing in here Tuesday night. Prayer meeting. Man, we're going to find somewhere. We're going to fall down on our knees. We're going to spread out before God. We're going to cry out for mercy. This ain't going to be one of them prayer meetings that turns into a meet and greet and eat. Amen. This is going to be seeking the face of God for the condition of the church in America. Amen. He said, I fell down. I spread out myself before God. Yeah. And listen what he said. He said, oh my God. I'm in verse 6. This yeah. is where I want to go. Verse 6. He said, oh my God. I am ashamed and blush to lift up my face to Thee. Come on. My God, for our iniquities are increased over our head and our trespass is grown up into the heavens. Mm -hmm. He was ashamed. For this oh, right. He began to blush. He was ashamed to lift His face toward God because of the sin. Sin ought to make you ashamed today. Mm -hmm. People, the majority of people have lost the ability to blush. Yes. They can tell any old dirty joke. Amen. They can watch any old filthy movie. Right. They can do any old thing they want. Amen. And laugh about it. Come on. That's a pretty bad shape to get in. Yes, sir. It's a pretty bad shape to get in when you're not ashamed of homosexuality. Amen. It's a pretty bad shape to get in when you're not ashamed of abortion. Yes, sir. It's a pretty bad shape to get in when you're not ashamed of fellowshipping with devils and Amen. doctrines of devils and wickedness and darkness. Amen. Right. It's a pretty bad shape to find yourself in whenever those right. things do not bother you. It's a pretty bad place to find yourself in when you can fellowship with the devil and it doesn't affect you any whatsoever. Amen. Amen. That's the truth. They couldn't blush, Brother Dave. That's right. This nation couldn't blush, but Ezra could. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. Ezra said, it makes me blush. It makes me ashamed right. to lift up my face unto you. 
But the nation of Israel had gotten to the place where America's got today. Uh -huh. Instead of hiding their sin, it was shouted from the rooftops. Yeah. Amen. Instead of hiding things today in America, we have parades. <laughs> March right down Main Street. Come on. With our with our banners held high. Right. I'm a sinner and I'm proud of it. Yeah. I commit abominations before God and I'm proud of it. Spitting in the very face of the God that they don't believe in, but one day they will. Amen. Oh, one day they will. Yes. Somebody asked me, what about atheists in hell? There ain't none. They might have been an atheist in this life, but there ain't no atheist no more, Brother Sleece. Amen. Brother David, they ain't an atheist no more. They believe now. Yeah. It's too late, but they believe now. One day you will believe. Yeah. Darwin believes now. Yes, sir. Yeah. He's got over his theory now. He don't believe in the monkey thing no more. He knows there is a God in heaven. He knows there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. No atheist in hell. Amen. Marilyn Madeline O'Hare, she believes now. Oh, yeah. Hitler believes now. Amen. Come on. Osama bin Laden believes now. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. He believes now. Tell it. Oh. These people had no shame. They could not blush. But thank God for a man that stood up and said, or that fell down. Mm -hmm. That fell down and said, Oh God, mm -hmm. I'm ashamed. I'm ashamed. Well, what kind of what kind of what kind of nation do we have? Well, let me tell you a few things about our nation. It hasn't been that long since we heard in the news about some teenage girls in a high school that made a pact to try and figure out which one of them could get pregnant first. Yes. Amen? Amen. It's nothing anymore for you to hear about a woman, well, I want a baby, but I don't want a husband. Right. Amen? Uh -huh. Things that used to be, used to be if a teenager got pregnant, mm -hmm. mom and daddy was ashamed. Right. If they were out of wedlock and they got pregnant, mom and daddy was ashamed Amen. about it. Amen. Amen? They didn't take her off somewhere and get the baby killed, but they hid it as long as they could because they was ashamed. Yes, sir. What will the people think? Right. What will they think? Oh, this is terrible. Amen? Uh -huh. Not anymore. Uh -huh. Oh, did you hear? Our baby's going to have a baby. Yeah. Amen? Come on. She's pregnant. Yeah. Instead of being ashamed of it, they shout it to the rooftop. They're proud of it. Amen. Proud of it. Yeah. <clears throat> Homosexuality? Used to keep it in the closet. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Right. Now we have, have gay pride days. Yeah. Amen? Celebrate. Celebrate it. Huh. Let's celebrate our abomination. Yeah. No more blushing. My Lord. No more shame. Oh, my, my, my. Yeah, you know. Oh, God, raise up people in these last days that still blush at sin. Yes. That still know what old time conviction is. Come on. I realize that your preacher stood in your pulpit this morning and told you that that was condemnation. Yeah. That that was something you should not feel bad. I want to tell you something this morning. If you're living a life of sin, you should feel bad. Thank God if you do feel bad. Yeah. Amen. Because that's old time Holy Ghost conviction. Yeah. Getting a hold of your soul and making you ashamed of the sinful ways that you practiced. Amen. Yeah. We need some people that'll blush. Amen. We need some people that are ashamed of sin. Yes. If you want to gauge the spiritual conditions of a nation, mm -hmm. look back over the years and see how that those things that once were done in secret, those things that once were a shame mm -hmm. and caused people to blush, yeah. look back and see how that in yesteryear those things were shameful and see how they're treated today. Come on. Because what one generation tolerates, the next generation embraces. Yes, sir. You'll find that little, but how's this happen, brother? But I tell you how it happens. It happens a little, a little. Uh, inch by inch, the devil begins to take a mile. Amen. You begin to wink at sin. Yeah. You begin to think, well, that's not all that big. Oh, you begin man. to pet the little foxes instead of getting rid of them. You begin to say, well, that thing, that's not quite that big. What happened to, to uh, Lot whenever he was in Sodom? I guarantee you, whenever he first went there, those things caused him to blush. Yes, sir. The things that he saw made him ashamed. Right. What are these people? This is awful. This is terrible. Keep my kids in here. Keep them separated from them people. Keep them protected. By the time they got him out, he was offering his kids to them. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. That's what happened. Little by little. Amen. You see, one of the dangers, one of the most, if not the most dangerous thing about celebrating Halloween mm -hmm. 
It's not the razor blades and the candy, and in big cities they still have to take their candy to the x-ray machine, get an x-ray before they need it. Right. But it's not that. It's the fact that we it lessens the effect of how evil wickedness is to the children. Yeah. It calluses the hearts of people toward the works of darkness. Yeah. It makes it more acceptable. Whenever you see it plastered here and there, not just in the stores, but in the schools. You can celebrate Halloween there, just can't celebrate Christmas. Yes. Can't celebrate no religious holiday. Well, you better talk to the Wiccans and the Satanic Church because that is their religious holiday. Amen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. They'll take the kids down the sidewalks of Livermore to the different businesses to get Halloween candy. Come on. But you can't celebrate Christmas. Can't have none of that God in here. Oh, you got a God in there, all right? It just ain't God but a big G. Yes, sir. It's a little G. You got that, right. You got the God of this world. Right. You got Satan. Amen. You let him come in. Right. But Jesus ain't welcome. Amen. Come on. Listen, what? And I'm fixing the clothes here in a minute. <clears throat> I got a bunch of this, but I'm not going to give it all to you this morning. Ezra, 9th chapter, 7th verse. Still reading along the same things here. He says, since the days of our father, just the words of Ezra, since the days of our father have we been in great trespass unto this day. And for our iniquities have we, our kings and our priests. Listen, he's basically to tell us the result of becoming a nation that no longer blushes at sin. This is what he said has happened to us because of this. <coughs> We've been delivered into the hand of the kings of the lands <clears throat> to the sword. Violence. Oh. Violence. Mm -hmm. Violence fills our land today. Yes, sir. Gunshots have become the norm in many neighborhoods across this nation. Yes, sir. School shootings have become part of the daily news. Amen. Violence, True. rape, murder right. have become a part of our society. Why? Amen. Because we no longer blush at sin. Amen. We are no longer ashamed of the abominations yes. that, are, that are practiced. That's true. So Ezra's telling us some things that comes from no longer blushing, no longer being ashamed of sin. He says, violence will come. Then he says to captivity, so bondage. We've never seen more people bound today than we have. True. Bound by a lot of things. The man that I talked to yesterday was bound by, first he was bound by prescription drugs. I, free, I think it was, Vi he started on Vicodin, then he went to Oxycontin, mm -hmm. then he went to cocaine. <clears throat> Christians bound by prescription drugs. People bound by cigarettes. Amen. People bound by alcohol. Right. People bound by pornography. Right. Never seen any more bondage. People bound, when you come down to it, bound by Satan. Yes, sir. Amen. That's it. This is where this will lead you. Absolutely. Being unashamed of sin. Exactly. It'll bring violence to your nation. It'll bring bondage to your nation. Amen. That's the truth. And it says to spoil. That's destruction. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And a confusion of face as it is this day, he said. This is the result of no shame, no longer blushing at wickedness and sin, no longer feeling that face cannot be tolerated, but taking on a spirit of compromise will lead you down the road to destruction. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you might ask today, now he's getting ready to give us some hope here. I know you're sitting out there thinking, oh my goodness, this is terrible, this is awful. But you may ask today why the Lord has tarried as long as He has. Mm -hmm. I know I've heard preachers say God's going to have to do something sooner. He's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen? Yeah. You may ask yourself, why have we not seen judgment poured out? And I know we've seen some judgment. We've seen some things happen. But I'm talking about seeing judgment poured out the way that sin abounds today in the same measure. Come on. There's a reason we haven't seen that. There's the reason that you're hearing this sermon today. 
And it's not because God is up there and He's mad and He's angry and He hates your guts. No, it's just the opposite. It's because He loves you. Amen? Because He loves you. Because He's sending out a wake-up call in these last days. Because He wants you to know sooner or later your sin will find you out. Amen? Those things you used to not be comfortable with now live with you and you are comfortable with them. Most demons, most devils would be comfortable in most church services this morning. They would feel no uncomfortableness whatsoever fellowshipping with the church world because the church has fellowship with devils yeah. for so long that you can't hardly tell the saint from the sinner. Come on, preach. Most devils be comfortable in your church. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some of the devils on your board. Yes, Lord bless him. Now listen to this. Here's your hope. Come on. It's not too late. Yes, sir. Ezra says. In the 8th verse, still in the ninth chapter, and now for a little space, grace hath been showed from the Lord our God. Oh, my, my, my. Amen. All of the wickedness that has happened. Mm -hmm. See, even there, whenever God dealt with Noah and the people of his day, yeah. The wickedness that had came up before him. He said, man, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry I even made them. I'm going to wipe them off the face of the earth. But before I do, I'm going to give them 120 years. I'm going to give them a space. <clears throat> That's where we're at today. Amen. We're in the space of grace. Yes, sir. This is the place where you have a chance to repent. Amen. This is your opportunity to turn back to God. This is your opportunity to hear the voice of one crying in the wilderness. The kingdom of heaven is at repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Today is the space of grace, Brother Slees. All right. And I know that people out there that continue to sin, and they either think, you know, well, there ain't no God, or they think they're getting by with it. Let me, I got news for you. You don't get by with sin. Amen. God's, get, God's had mercy on you, giving you a space to repent, but sooner or later you're seeing to catch up with you. Yes, sir. Sooner or later, America's sin, and I'm not too sure that it ain't already catching up with us. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. I'm not too sure it's not already catching up with us. But I know this much. There is still mercy to be found. Amen. There's still grace. Yes. There's still, there's, this is that space of grace yes. that has been shown to us by the Lord our God. Mm -hmm. And what's this for? <clears throat> it's for the remnant's sake. Ezra goes ahead and say that. He goes on to say that, that God may lighten our eyes so it's a space to reveal the truth to those that mm -hmm. do not know the truth. It's a space of reviving, he says. It's a space for the remnant of the Lord to be saved. A space for His remnant to be, to be separated and to be, to be uh, kept from the time of great tribulation that's going to come up on the face of the earth. This is your time. This is your space. Amen. Don't shun, don't, don't shrug it off. Don't brush it aside and say, well, I'll repent later. Yeah, but yeah. time might run out for you. Amen. You may run out. This space ain't going to last forever, Brother David. God has given a space for grace. Now's the time to repent. Today is the day of salvation. To now's the time for America. We can't afford to wait four more years. Now's the time for America to stand up and take a stand for godly principles. Amen. We can't afford to wait. It's like little Israel over there. Whenever they keep telling them, well, just wait, just wait. You know, Iran and their nuclear weapons that they're trying to develop and that crazy leader they've got. Mm -hmm. They just keep telling Israel, well, just wait. Mm -hmm. And Benjamin and now who their leader says, wait till when? Till it's too late? Yeah. Till it's too late? Amen. Yeah. Wait till it's too late? Mm -hmm. That's where most people are going to find themselves because straight is the gate and narrow the way and few there be that find it. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. But broad is the way. It's wide. Yeah. It's wide and there's room for many. Amen. And many there will be that enter therein. Amen. Yes, sir. Now's your time to repent. Amen. Now's the time to turn to God. Yeah. God doesn't bring us these messages so that we'll feel beat up and bruised. Uh 
right. He brings us these messages to bring to light the things that are happening in our nation and to let us know yes, that there's still mercy. Amen. There's still grace. He is still a God of restoration. Amen? Yes, but sooner or later, He will judge sin. Yes, sir. Sooner or later, He will judge sin. Amen. And these things that we've been reading about in Ezra are the things that happen when a nation no longer blushes mm -hmm. at sin. The very next chapter, <clears throat> in chapter 10, you'll find that the people begin to repent and they begin to confess and they begin to turn back to God. Why? Because of the prayer of Ezra, because of the preaching of Ezra. You see, that's what old-fashioned anointing preaching will do. Old-fashioned anointing preaching will step on your toes. Yes. Amen. Old-fashioned anointing preaching, Brother Rod, will make you want to crawl under the nearest pew if you've been shacking up with somebody. Amen. Amen. Old-fashioned preaching, anointed by and the anointed word of God, will cause you to want to hide somewhere. Because yeah. you know you've been sleeping with the pastor's wife. Because you know you've been sleeping with the song leader. Because you know you and that woman been shacked up for years. Ain't never got married. Amen? Come on. It'll cause you to want to go hide under a pew somewhere. Yeah. And last but certainly not least, and the benefit of it thereof, is it'll cause you to come down to an old-fashioned altar and cry out to God for salvation that'll save your soul and change your life. Amen. The gospel that we preach today is not one that you can sit under and listen and listen and continue to stay the same. It'll change you. It'll change you. Salvation will change you. Amen. Come on. It's not one where you come into church and I feel good, you feel good, I'm okay, you're okay, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. It's one that shows us as we looked in the mirror this morning. Most of us, when we looked in the mirror, we thought, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. it's going to get any worse. Mm -hmm. But that's the way the gospel is. We look in the mirror of God's Word and see where we're missing it. And God's telling us this morning, this nation has missed the mark. Yes, sir. No longer does this nation blush at the thought of That's sin. Right. No longer are they ashamed. Thank God there's still a remnant, still a people mm -hmm. that will stand up in these last days as Ezra did and will pray and say, God, have mercy. Yeah. Have mercy. Give our nation. That's what I'm praying for. I'm not sitting somewhere in the corner praying God to pour judgment out on this nation. I'm praying for Him to, have, to allow a space of grace for this nation to repent so that souls don't go right. to a devil's hell. Amen. But you see anointed preaching, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit will read your mail. Yes, sir. Amen. True. You'll feel like the preacher's preaching right at you. Exactly. And you'll get up and leave the church sometimes even mad. Right. Well, I know he was throwing that right at me. Absolutely. When in reality, the Holy Spirit was just sticking his finger in your face and saying, you're guilty. Right. You're guilty of this. Amen. Amen. I preached sermons before and people get mad at me and I had no idea what they were into or how they were living, but they thought for sure I done found it out and I was preaching it right at them. Yeah. That's called the Holy Spirit. That's called conviction. Come on, brother. God knows what you're doing. Amen. I don't have to know what you're doing. God does. Right. I don't have to know your lifestyle. The Holy Spirit does. Yes, I don't have to be there with you at work whenever you tell a dirty joke, joke, or you cuss, or you you laugh at the dirty jokes that are told. The Holy Spirit's there with you, and He knows exactly what you're doing. You can't right. hide it from Him. You might be able to come into church on Sunday morning and lift up your hands and shake them a shot tie, and then go out and live like the devil and the pastor not know it but God does Come on, brother. God knows it amen that's good he sees it all yes sir and he's looking for somebody that's still ashamed of sin knows all I, I thank God today that whenever I read that shirt it bothered me to the pits of my spirit amen yeah. because when we get to the place where it don't we're in trouble yes sir when you get to the place where sin no longer bothers you uh -huh. you're in bad trouble yes when you get to the place where you can live any old way you want to live uh -huh. and still go to church on Sunday morning and feel no conviction whatsoever, mm -hmm. you're in a bad trouble. Reprobate time. You're in danger of crossing a line you may not ever get back over. Yes, sir. God sent us some people that are ashamed of sin. And for those that are not, Lord calls them to be ashamed yeah. of sin. Amen. Oh, true. We need to be ashamed. Yes, sir. Sin should make us ashamed. Yes, sir. Jeremiah put it like this, and I'm closing. <coughs> He's talking about the sins of the people in the 15th chapter, the sixth, uh, the sixth uh, chapter in the 15th verse of Jeremiah. He says, were they ashamed when they committed abominations? Nay, they were not ashamed. Neither could they blush. 
They were not ashamed. Couldn't even blush. That's today. Oh, it's like reading the headlines. Amen. But here's the remedy. 16th verse. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths. Mm -hmm. Where is the good way, and walk therein? Mm -hmm. Ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, We will not walk therein. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, as a pastor, you feel like you're preaching to a fence post and ain't doing no good. Yeah. This next scripture right here tells me why. Also, I said, Watchmen over you, saying, Hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken. Mm. We ain't going to listen to you. Mm. Well, you don't have to. But sooner or later, you will pay the piper. Amen. Sooner or later, you will face the music. Yes, sir. And then you'll remember. As you stand to the judgment, you won't remember the words of your best life now. Mm. You'll remember the anointed words of the preacher that warned you mm. the path that you were on and where it was leading. Yeah. I believe with all my heart there are people in hell today that rehearse over and over in their mind the last altar call they <clears throat> set through and did not go to the altar. Yeah. Can you imagine what a torment it is Amen. to know you were just one prayer away? Yeah. One altar call away. You, didn't, you wouldn't have to be there. Come on. If you'd have just got up when the Holy Spirit dealt with you and went down to the altar, yeah. and God's calling for a people that will pray, yes, that will seek out the old past, that are still ashamed of sin Amen. for a people that can blush. Yeah. Because our nation is about past the point where she no longer blushes at Amen. sin. And I've read to you this morning what the consequences of that is. We're seeing it in the headlines of our paper this morning what the consequence of that is. Mm -hmm. If sin don't bother you, you need to pray, God, please, send some old-fashioned Holy Ghost conviction into my life. Amen. Let me once again be bothered by sin. Yeah. Let me once again blush at the abominations. Yeah. Let me once again be ashamed of the things that are an abomination to God. Yes, sir. Amen. True. <clears throat> I was going to preach a Halloween sermon this morning. I think we got enough of it in. And, and most of you out there know our stand on it. And we've been sending out newsletters and been getting requests for CDs of the sermons. And it's been on all of our radio programs this month. All of the scriptures, all of the quotes from those that have came out of witchcraft, mm. all of those that say, as a matter of fact, I think it was Anton LaVey, the founder of the Satanic Church, mm. that said Halloween was, their, was his favorite night of the year. It was their highest holy day or unholy day, we'll call it. Yeah. So it's a night whenever Christians and Satanists alike both worship the devil. Mm. Mm. And they'll do so without blushing. Amen. And if they are blessed, you won't be able to tell it because they're hid behind a false face. Mm -hmm. Amen. True. We need some people that will still blush. That will still stand for the truth right. in a generation that has lost sight of what the truth really is. Someone else this morning have something before we go?